Hi, I'm Dr. David Robert Grimes. I'm a physicist, cancer researcher, and science writer. And today I'd like to talk a little bit about the HPV vaccine. In the past few months, all manner of sound and fury has resounded on social media about this, with odious claims that it's damaging young women being frequently traded. Now, back in January, I wrote a piece for The Guardian where I tried to tackle some of these misconceptions. But since January, the rumours continue unabated, with potentially harmful implications. In this video, I'm going to expand upon the reasons that the HIV vaccine is not harmful, and I'm going to show why the odious claims are a mixture of misguided and malicious. First, we should start with the basics. Why does the HPV vaccine matter? Well, HPV is a family of viruses that infect humans, primarily spread through sexual contact. There's over 170 strains that we know of, and most of them are benign. However, there are some types that are harmful. Type 6 and 11 can cause genital warts, and type 16 and 18 in particular can cause some different cancers. Specifically, it can cause cervical cancer, vaginal cancer, vulvar cancer, penile cancer, anal cancer, and a series of oral cancers. Up to 99.7% of all cervical cancers start with a HPV infection. And in 2012 alone, 270,000 women died from cervical cancer. The HPV vaccine is extraordinarily effective at stopping HPV infections if it's given before people are sexually active. It prevents the spread of HPV in genital warts and ultimately it has the capacity to make cervical cancer a thing of the past. As women are typically at higher risk of HPV mediated cancer, health services worldwide aim to get the vaccination to women before they're sexually active, typically in their early teens. This is not just a hypothetical lifesaver. It really is saving lives right now. Since the introduction of HPV vaccine in 2006 to the States, HPV infection rates have fallen by a massive 56%. Yet even so, a number of very vocal groups proclaim that this vaccine is damaging their daughters. So what's going on? You'll probably have noticed that the claims of damage are not coming from the medical or scientific community, who in fact still encourage and endorse the vaccination. So you might reasonably ask then, why are scientists and doctors, you know, so confident that the HPV vaccine isn't causing illness? Well, part of the answer lies in the fact that the data simply doesn't support that conclusion. When the anecdotes and claims are followed up on, they inevitably amount to nothing. In science, to show a real link between two things, you need to exclude all possible confounding influences and variables. Now, the HPV vaccine has been studied for 25 years and evaluated for safety by thousands of researchers and independent bodies worldwide. And by all measures, it's been found to be an extremely safe and effective intervention. The complication rate is extremely low, with the most common reactions being irritation at the site of injection and fainting post-injection, which, as you've probably realised, are the same symptoms seen with any shot. Since its release, the safety and efficacy of the vaccine has been reaffirmed by numerous independent investigations, including a 2015 report which based itself on data from over a million participants, which concluded the vaccine had a favourable safety profile. Well in excess of 200 million doses have been given worldwide, and the ominous claims made on social media simply haven't been seen in reality, despite a huge sample group and meticulous follow-through by researchers. Yet despite the lack of evidence for these claims, scare stories of girls allegedly damaged by the vaccine abound. Now, while these girls may be ill, the vaccine is not the cause of their woes. For one thing, the constellation of symptoms reported include everything bar the kitchen sink, but there's precious little evidence for any of it. Most of the things reported are highly subjective and ultimately can't be proven or measured. Now, it is statistically likely that some women that get the vaccination will go on to be ill, given the sheer amount of people getting the vaccination. But just because one thing follows another does not mean the previous thing caused it. That would be like me claiming that today was sunny because I wore my blue jumper yesterday. 
The abundance of scientific data worldwide simply doesn't support claims of HPV vaccine damage. Indeed, some of the more specific claims, such as the idea that HPV vaccine causes thrombosis or chronic fatigue, have been specifically debunked by research teams, and yet are still clung to by anti-HPV vaccine activists. One of the ironies of all this is that all this panic over the vaccine may well be the reason why several people report a perception of damage. The impact of human psychology is an important one and shouldn't be overlooked. The nocebo effect is the observation that if we expect an agent to damage us, then when we are exposed to it, we typically report damage, even if the agent is utterly benign. Expectations matter. And it's not surprising if we are telling teenage girls and their families that this vaccine is potentially dangerous or damaging, that some of them will report feeling ill after it. But crucially, this has nothing to do with the vaccine. There's another reason for opposition to vaccination in general. Indeed, there's been opposition to vaccination since the time of Jenner. Anti-vaccine movement is very, very vocal, and they know well that fear sells their ideological methods. I have had the dubious pleasure of debating spokespeople, figureheads, and and, and individuals from the anti-vaccine community over the years. And I do try to be sympathetic, even when I think they're misguided, but it can be frustrating as most of the time these arguments are not done or conducted in good faith. I am heartily sick of trying to engage with these groups and for them to completely ignore any evidence that undermines their position and cling to anything however flimsy, that they think supports it. They seem, too, to have a deeply conspiratorial mindset. In these debates, I am inevitably accused of being enthralled to Big Pharma or part of a conspiracy to suppress some truth. It gets tiring and upsetting to deal with the personal abuse, threats, and insinuations about your character, and indeed the occasional intimidation, for just presenting the scientific case. There's no conspiracy. The reason the scientific and medical community don't appear to pay much heed to these stories is that they really just don't stack up. Quite frankly, however, many of the major players in the anti-vaccine movement pathologically refuse to engage with the ample evidence that their narrative is mistaken. Make no mistake, I don't enjoy this abuse, and I don't enjoy putting myself out there to get it. So why, you might ask, am I saying all this again? I'm saying this because we stand on the cusp of an era where the tragedy of cervical and other HPV-mediated cancer becomes a distant memory, confined to history books, the way smallpox is to us today. We stand with the potential for a future where no young woman has to go for a pap smear with the sword of Damocles hanging over her head, worried what the results might be. A future where no family loses a daughter or a sister or a mother to preventable cervical cancer. We have all lost women we love to this scourge. And finally, we, as a society, have a tool to do away with it once and for all. But if we ignore the evidence and instead allow misguided or dishonest individuals to derail us from this, we will measure the cost of our foolishness in human lives. Please, if you're a parent, and you have concerns about the HIV vaccine, or if you're a young person who's due to get it and has heard these stories and is worried, then please talk to your healthcare provider, talk to your doctor, your physician, your pharmacist. Please do not get your medical advice from dubious sources and web pages and crank Facebook posts. We have a choice. We as a society can get informed and protect our children or we can risk having to bury them. For me, that's no choice at all. I'm going to leave some links to some of this information in the video, so it might be useful. Thank you for listening.